Endless Hustle presented by Cardan. If you're like me and you're noticing dark circles under your eyes, wrinkles creeping up, or breakouts, then Cardan is the best solution for you. Cardan is an effective skincare system for men. Cardan uses cactus extract and all their products to soothe the irritation from shaving. This quick, easy-to-use skincare system gives you real results in just a few steps. Use code BROBIBLE for 15% off. All right, we're back on the Endless Hustle as I'm joined by, I can say, a big Gen Z star. As an old man myself, I love saying this. He's part of one of Netflix's biggest just young shows, Never Have I Ever. It's back for season two. And what blows my mind about you, Jaron Lewis, and as you're making this hit show, you're a student. So, man, I'd love to be on a hit show in college. It's got to be fun. It's unbelievable. It's it's great because I've got the best of both worlds. I've got my dreams coming true at work, and I'm on an incredible show with some really amazing, talented people, and it's such a joy to be there and work there. And also, college is awesome. Everybody says it's the best times of your life, and it really has been for me. I've met some lifelong friends, and I love being in class and learning more in person than it is online, but hopefully we'll, be, we'll get back to in person soon, and I can have school spirit and all those college things. So this show got, I saw the viewership numbers, 48 million streams, which anytime Netflix releases these numbers, you're a hit. <laughs> you're getting season two and probably you're going till season eight because that's Netflix money. They can spend whatever they want. But what's it like walking around college when you're on a hit show? You've got to feel the eyeballs coming at you from every direction virtual this year so because the show came out during the pandemic I haven't had the opportunity to really be full-fledged on campus interacting with my my peers at USC but I have had the opportunity to get to interact with some fans whether it's in LA and people recognize me with my mask on or in Texas now that I'm back here for the summer it's it's unbelievable the response that we've gotten again our show is so diverse and relatable that the I have people coming up to me being like, wow, the show is so incredible. And they're like a 50 year old Jack dude in a Thai restaurant. Like that happened to me one time and it was so unexpected. And it's, it's really incredible to hear how much our show means to so many different people. It's really an actor's dream to be on a show like that. I know you're a big sports guy. So let's start with dude. the first one, the Dallas stars. Cause I know you're a big stars fan. Tell me all about your stars fandom. I have always wanted to play hockey ever since I was a kid. I took lessons when I was younger and then decided to play football and soccer and powerlifting in high school. So stopped learning how to play hockey. And I became such a big Stars fan in high school. I learned all of the players' names. I've even gotten in contact a little bit with the Stars because I can't stop tagging them in my posts. I watched every single playoff game in our Stanley Cup run last year. I was sorely disappointed and harbor a little bit of Hatred for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Sorry to any Lightning fans out there, but you're just too good. Let somebody else have a chance. <laughs> um, a little disappointed in our performance this year, but I love the Stars. Uh, my hockey dreams of being a professional Stars player are probably not going to be realized, but I am taking adult skating lessons because I want to play beer league because I, uh, I love hockey and I figure why not? Got to learn how to skate first. So maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll play some hockey. You wouldn't necessarily think of Dallas as a hockey town, but anyone who knows hockey knows that Dallas loves the stars. What's the culture like down there around the franchise? Everybody's super excited about the stars, especially when they do well. It is a big football town. I'm a big Cowboys fan. I love the Cowboys. You know, it's I've grown up that way. I have never had them be good because I was born in 2000. Everybody's like, oh, they had such a dynasty. I'm like, yeah, I missed it. Still haven't seen it. Hopefully it's coming soon. But we do have a pretty large hockey fan base. I know that people love going to the American Airlines Center for games. I love going for games. And it's exciting when you've got some young, exciting players to watch that are really skilled. I think we've got some young guys that are going to be pretty incredible in the years to come. So I'm excited about our future. Now I just need my Cowboys to pull through as well. So if you got a dream hockey experience, what would it be? God, I want to, okay, this might sound crazy, but I have always loved the goalies and I've always wanted to like try on all the pads and stuff. And I don't know that I'd want to get shot at by like Tyler Sagan or Jamie Ben or, you know, an NHL star, because I feel like that'd be terrifying, but maybe they could teach me some moves. I'll, uh, ben Bishop could give me some pointers in the, in between the pipes and uh, I could, I could save some uh, easy wrist shots at 10% of their actual power, perhaps. 
So speaking of sports, your narrator for season one of Never Have I Ever was none other than John McEnroe of all people, which is like the craziest thing. Who knew John McEnroe's narrating Netflix shows? He's also incredible. That man is so funny. I mean, like you wouldn't expect him to be narrating a 15 year old Tamil girl's life, but he is so freaking excellent in that. So when you, when, when this show catches fire, like obviously you're a young guy, so you haven't been around the business for 40 years. Cause I talked to actors and they're like, shit, I've been a part of 50 pilots. They all failed till I got my break. It's awful. Here you are part of a hit show. Does it, do you feel almost spoiled? It, like how, when you sit back and you're like, man, I right away got on this show and it's got 50 million people watching it. Like what's going through your head as you're seeing the success? You know, I, it's almost a little bit like in sports where you, sometimes you have really great rookies come in and it's like, wow, they're a success overnight. But you, you think about it, it's like, well, they've been training since they were, you know, in diapers for say hockey, you know, they've been, they've been working at it for such a long time. I started when I was five. So I actually have been doing this for about 15 years. This is the biggest thing I've ever done. Like, this is my draft day. This is my shot. And I've finally gotten into a franchise working for Netflix, who's such an incredible employer that has allowed me to really explode. I feel like I'm on my Stanley Cup run right now. You know, I'm getting uh, the chance to really show off my skills and to learn and to grow as a young player and actor as well. And um, it's just, it's exciting for the things to come. And I'm looking forward to staying in the league if we're still using metaphors of uh, continuing with other projects and being able to show off what I can do. So where did, you obviously started at five, but like, were there ever moments where you're like, all right, this isn't what I want to do, or were you just dead set? I'm going to be an actor. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to be an actor, but I feel like like sports and like anything, sometimes you can get discouraged. And the important part, I, I played football in high school and those lessons never left me where my coach always said, you know, you got to, you got to compete and you got to get through adversity. You're going to be faced with challenges and you've got to be able to overcome those and there's strategies that I use to do that, whether it's, you know, mental comparison and, and uh, goal setting and things like that, that you do in sports. It's the same thing for actors. Sometimes we go through setbacks and sometimes we have great success and it's a roller coaster, but it's what I love to do. It's what I've always loved to do. And I'm going to keep going for as long as I can. Let's talk some Texas football because please until Friday night lights came out outside of Texas pre like people didn't really realize what Texas football means to that state. Then Friday Night Lights comes out. People are like, oh my God, Midland, Odessa, like what are these places? What is happening? I had Luke Wilson on the show last week. He's from Dallas and he grew up playing football too. And we were talking just about the football culture around Dallas and Fort Worth. So having played yourself, what is that culture like? It's unlike anywhere I have ever been. People say like football is like a religion here, but genuinely it is an identity. It is a community. Everybody comes out and watches the games. And as a player playing under the lights, whether it's the spring game or the rivalry game, which was always my favorite, it's this energy, this electricity, this magic for anybody that has played football, sports, you can just feel it. It's something that's intangible, but you know what I'm talking about if you've ever felt it. And I also was undersized and everybody always judged me. They were like, oh, throw it to the short kid. I was the captain my senior year, but I always had something to prove. I had a chip on my shoulder and we wound up my high school. My senior year ended up beating Cedar Hill in the playoffs of the first round. We were 40 point underdogs and we beat them off of a last second field goal that they had missed. And it was covered in the news. And that was one of my favorite memories from high school Still to this day, I think about the goosebumps that I got pouring the Gatorade on my coach and running into the field. It's something that everybody should experience if they have the chance. Texas football is like nothing you've ever seen. Wait, so you were like the cool kid in high school. So (laughs) now I'm really jealous. Hit show in Netflix in college. Team captain in Dallas in football. Like, dude, you might be living my dream life. I think I'm going to like... I think I'm going to do like a deal with the devil and come back as Jaron Lewison. Like that's my ask, like for the next stage of my life. (laughs) Man, I appreciate that. I feel really lucky to have been able to experience both of those things and others as well. And I'm looking forward to more crazy adventures for myself. Uh, You know, who knows what's next? I have no idea. Wait wait till you're an A-list actor. It's going to make Dallas (laughs) football look like. So when you're in high school, were you getting actual college offers, any college interests? 
No, I wasn't. I, I never had pursued that. Uh, I also, again, being like five, six, I, I was an undersized guy. I did run a four, five, eight, 40 in high school. So I was really quick. And I also was a power lifter. And I was uh, one of the captains for that. I did win some powerlifting meets, some local powerlifting meets. When I was a junior, I hit 405 on squat in the 132 weight pound class. So that also is something that I love to do, but never pursued it collegiately. I thought about joining at USC. They have a club powerlifting team, but I just didn't have the time to train. And it's pretty hard on your body for powerlifters out there that know what I'm talking about or weightlifters in general. It's a, it's a tough season and it requires a lot of effort. And I, I just didn't have time, but maybe in the future, who knows, right? By the way, getting an MTV nomination, an MTV movie award, like, I mean, like, I would literally have that framed. That's like the, for your age group, that's like the coolest thing. So when you find out that you're nominated by MTV, like, are you like jumping through the roof? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I tell you the truth, I didn't believe it at first because that is such a well-known, huge award show. It was like one of the first big nominations besides the People's Choice Award, which we did win as a cast um, for, uh, I think it was Best Comedy. And, and that was super exciting. And the MTV Award, for my character, you know, it's the Best Kiss nomination, which is super exciting because that means that so many people identified with your character and, and with your scene partner, Maitri Ramakrishnan, who plays Davey, who's the lead in our show. And that's a bit of a spoiler alert uh, for the uh, Best Kiss nomination, but it just shows how many people love our show and, and, and loved our characters and related to that. So for me as an actor, that tells me I really did my job and I did it well and my trade did, and we're just really proud of that. I don't know if you saw, but your executive producer, Mindy Kaling, who's now become one of the biggest producers in Hollywood, yeah. she partnered up with Kurt Rambis's wife and Jeannie Buss, and they're doing a Lakers yes. workplace. So now that you're in the Mindy Kaling, I <laughs> work for you club, are you <laughs> able to like be like, hey, this Lakers series, uh, if, you need, if you need a kid who's athletic and you've worked with and he shows up on time, you know where to go? Is there like, are you able to reach out in that respect? Well, tell you the truth, I feel so lucky to be able to work with Mindy on this show right now. If she ever needs me, I'm there. She knows where to find me. It's a yes for me. It, no matter what she wants me to do, I, I don't even need to read it. You can just, yeah, I'm there. You, you let me know what time to show up. I'll be there 10 minutes early. <laughs> yeah, you're like, Mindy, I'm in. Whatever you, you need me I, to be. I love Mindy. Boy. She's I'm in. <laughs> Exactly right. She's incredible. Whatever she wants me to do, she's got it. Yes, it's a yes for me. <laughs> Dude, you're electric. You've got a sterling personality, a bright future ahead. Congrats on this incredible show that you guys are part of. And, you know, I, I could only imagine the offers are now coming in. The scripts are coming in. Have you started thinking about, by the way, like where you want to be 5, 10, 15 years? It's kind of a cliche. Like everybody wants to be Leo or Mark Wahlberg or whatever. But is there like a specific path that you've kind of framed in your mind for where you'd like to build this thing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love some of my role models are Steve Carell and John Krasinski and Mindy as well. People that can do multiple aspects of our business and are really multifaceted in what they're incredible at doing. I know that John originally started out on The Office and then has written and become kind of a leading man. And, and that's the, cra the uh, path that I really want to craft for myself and my team. And uh, we've talked about it a lot. And I know that being a leading man and, and doing films and really complex, deep characters that have lots of layers is something that I really want to get into. I love variety of film and, and different kinds of genres and I love TV as well. So I'm really excited to see what the next couple of years hold for me and the kinds of projects that I'll have the ability to do and the types of characters that I'm going to portray. I can't wait to see what's next. By the way, you've got a massive social media following. So yeah. I got to know some of the craziest DM slip-ins you've had, <laughs> whether they're strange or crazy. I can only imagine the shit that's being thrown at you. A lot of them are just really excited fans that are like, I love you so much. And I don't have the opportunity to respond to everybody, but I do try. Occasionally someone will be like, Hey, it's my 21st birthday. Like, can you like send me a video of you doing a cheers or something? And like some of those, I'll, if I see them, I'll, I'll send a video and they freak out. And I love it. But again, it just speaks to how much people love the show. And still, I can't believe it. I'm like, oh, my God, these people are the one thing they want for their birthday. It's like a video of me saying happy birthday. That's just that's wild to me. And then interactions with like the Dallas Stars. And uh, I'm a big tennis fan. So I've gotten the chance to speak with Head Tennis, which is my favorite tennis brand. And 
it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, like a couple of years ago, I was just a normal football kid from Texas who was trying to act and see what the hell would have happened. And now I can't believe it. Every time I go look at my DMS, it's just, it's really special. They see the blue check mark. They see the number. They're like, who is this kid? Like we got to head, head tennis is like, they need you more than you need them, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. They, I, my forehand has gotten so good from using the gravity MP, which is a, special racket I just started using from head. And I mean, they've really upped my tennis game. So I love working with them. <laughs> Dude, you're absolutely awesome. I, a kid your age should not have this great a personality, but you're, you're <laughs> awesome. And this has been, you, this has been a joy. I wasn't sure what to expect. And <laughs> I'm like, I had a great time, man. So congrats on season two of never have I ever probably going to season eight. We'll be doing this for another <laughs> six seasons together but congratulations man jaron you're awesome thank you so much i really appreciate your time as well this was uh this was a lot of fun